not move your finger off of it, okay? Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt you. What if your head, what if your foot hurts me? It's not gonna hit you. I'm so scared. Do just, not hurt me. Just do not move your what hand. What point can just I move? Just don't move your hand. Well, ever. Can, ever. Well, I did. I moved it. But you yeah. made it. Welcome to the tailgate brought to you by Verizon. 5G built right from the network more people rely on, only on Verizon. I'm Michelle Margot, that is Ralph Vacchiano. And Ralph, uh, the Patriots and the Bills almost played in a blizzard on Monday night. Is it just me or is football just so much better in the snow? Oh no, it's not just you. Football is absolutely much better in the snow. It's better to look at, it's, it's probably better to play in, but I have to throw in a little caveat here. It's better in the snow as long as I'm inside with a nice hot cup of coffee and a heater, because I don't want to ever have to experience, you know, Green Bay back in 2008, the NFC Championship game again. I like to be warm, but if the players are miserable, that's great. Have at it. I love the PTSD, though, with a very specific uh, 2008 Green Bay game. I still barely have feeling in my hands from being outside for that. I, I'm actually thinking of suing SNY. They made, they made me do a spot <laughs> outside in minus 22 temperatures that day, and I've never recovered. It's time for Take It From a Pro as we welcome back SNY's Jets analyst, Leger Ducible. Uh, Leger. CJ Mosley had some very real comments after Sunday's loss to the Eagles, saying that opposing players um, aren't respecting them and are even laughing at them on the sidelines. So what do you make of those comments? Um, Sean, I've gone back and forth about this, right? Because as an ex-player, there's been times where I've laughed at head coaches, especially during the challenge, because you're like, come on, coach. Like, you know, you're not, you're not going to win this challenge. Like, so it was a chuckle thing. I don't think it was a disrespectful thing. And then also I go back to, you know, Fletcher Cox posting the picture right after the game with him and CJ Mosley kind of dapping each other up. Now, did that happen post coin toss or did it happen at the end of the game? Because if you feel like somebody's disrespecting you, then you're probably not going to shake their hands at the end of the game. So the thing is, as a player, like only you can change that mindset, right? Uh, how about we stop letting people run the ball at will on us? How about we play smarter football on defense on second and long? Let's not continue to give up screen plays because we know offenses are built to stay on track and that's a get back on track down. So they're going to run draw and screen at you. So the only people that can change that mindset, Michelle, are the people in that locker room. So I don't know if they can do it this year throughout the season or maybe they need to bring in some more like-minded people because when when you talk about respect it's about attitude and the mentality and you got to have that attitude and mentality that nobody's going to disrespect you on the field there's sort of two sides to it when i look at it the first is you know anybody who's played any sport any game knows what it's like to lose big or to be overmatched and you would hope an opponent would be classy enough not to kick you while you're down not to laugh at you not to run up the score and all of that stuff but the bottom line is if you want to stop it just like Robert Sala said, respect is earned. You got to go out and earn it. You want to stop them from running the ball on you? Find a way to do it. Make a tackle. You want to stop them from laughing? Well, make it a game while they're laughing. While they, while they think they're taking you for granted, go and tie the score or something like that. And the Jets aren't capable of doing that. But at some point, you would think eventually the worm will turn a little bit for them and you know they'll be able to get their revenge. But it's, it's the only way to get the respect is to go out on the field and say, we're going to take it. We're going to take back what we feel we're deserved. Let's dive into the comments section. And Ralph, uh, it is clearly not a good time to be a New York football fan. But if you were an objective fan, what team do you think fans would rather be rooting for right now in terms of the future, the Jets or the Giants? Do they have to only pick those two? Because there are 30 other teams that have to be more fun to root for than the two New York teams. Boy, that's a good question because they're both playing pretty crappy football right now. I would think the Jets are probably a little bit more fun to root for because they're kind of building towards the future. And I've always believed that, you know, New York fans can tolerate a rebuilding project. They're okay with young players who aren't great at the moment, but might be in the future, as long as that project is going somewhere and heading in the right direction. And I think they can sense that, you know, a lot of these Jets that they're just watching now at the beginning, Elijah Moore, Zach Wilson, Michael Carter, when he was healthy, they could be a part of a better future. I don't know that the same sense is there for the Giants. I think that if people are watching them right now, it's like just a death march that, you know, a feeling that, okay, there's five games left and then they're going to blow the whole thing up and start over. So why are we wasting our time? So I, I, I'd rather watch the younger players. I think the Jets are more interesting, but 
I don't know if Giants fans could start rooting for the Jets. That might be a little difficult. Let's call an audible. And usually when you call an audible, it causes some confusion. And I don't know about you guys, but Joe Judge had me confused after Sunday's loss. There's a lot of things that I saw today in the way we played. A lot of things that are moving in the right direction. A lot of things I'm very pleased with in terms of how we competed. Guys, has he been watching a different team this season? Um, he must be watching a different team. To me, it's just not authentic. As a player in that locker room, yes, you, you want your coach to have your back. You don't want him to throw you under the bus, but you also got to be authentic as a head coach because guys will tune you out. If you're not, you're saying that you saw some good things. Well, what was good? Like your team put up nine points. You fired the offensive coordinator. That was supposed to help. That hasn't really helped the offense. Yes, we know the offensive line has been banged up. Yes, we know some of the playmakers on the outside have been banged up, but to put up nine points in the NFL, you don't give your defense a chance to win the game. And the Giants defense has actually played well enough the last month and a half to win some games. So if I'm a player on that team, it just it, it just doesn't seem like it's authentic. I don't know if I believe in the coach if he's out here saying that he saw some good things when, when we're out there on the field and we can clearly see there aren't some good things going on. Yeah, you know, we asked Joe Judge about it the next day, about the, the words he had in the press conference, and he made it clear that, you know, what he says to his players is something entirely different. And from what I'm told, he was brutally honest with them about how bad it was. But what he's the point I think he's missing is these press conferences aren't really for the players. You can send a message to them through the media for sure, but they're there for the fans and everyone else. And the general reaction from all the Giants fans I know and hear from on Twitter and wherever else was, is he bleeping kidding with this? They just couldn't believe that Joe Judge was actually saying there were positive things in a game that was just a disaster in a season that's been a disaster. I mean, he really, I get that he probably doesn't believe all that and he wants to keep things positive, but you start to wonder, is this where his bar is? Is this 250 yards, nine points? Is that really the kind of progress he's looking for? I doubt it, but certainly that's the image that he is projecting at the moment, and it's not really a good look. But Jay, what do you think of Joe Judge's coaching style as a whole? As a player, right, you buy in early in the year, um, all the up downs, all the making guys run around. To me, was very collegey, high schoolish. Like these are grown men that know how to play the game. And, and, and I get it. You come from the New England regime, right? And that's how they've done it. Ooh. But if you've looked at the history of coaches that have come from that regime, it doesn't really pan out for them, right? And, and it's easy to win like that when you have Tom Brady. Now, Bill Belichick is breaking the mold this year because he's winning like that with a younger version of Tom Brady. But it's hard to win in the league like that. And then when you don't win, players tune, you know, start to tune you out, right? All the all the stuff about buying in when you, you're making guys run laps and, and do up downs, treating them like they're high school kids or college kids, it doesn't pan out unless you win games. When you don't win games, players will tune you out, and I think that's what's happening right now for the New York Giants. Yeah, great insight. Thank you so much, Lejay. I'm Michelle Margot, and I'm trying out for place kicker of the New York Jets. Big opportunity out there for you today, Michelle. How do you think it went? Oh, you know, practice makes perfect, uh, but I did leave it all out there on the field today. Couldn't have done it without my team. Um, I really just feel like you got to take it one game at a time. There's always tomorrow, and uh, it is what it is. The Jets worked out yet another new kicker this week, Michelle the Toe Margot, and that's T-A-U-X, and apparently the nickname has nothing to do with football, but the scouts were buzzing about her workout video. One of them told me it was, quote, fantastically adequate. A second scout said to me that, quote, she seems to have a vague idea that the ball needs to be kicked. And a third scout said to me, quote, I've seen you guys on the tailgate. It's good that she's considering her career options. Robert, can you address the uh, kicker situation? Um, then we signed uh, another kicker. But we thank Michelle for trying out. Time to get into victory formation. And speaking of victory formation, Ralph, did you see Gardner Minshew's celebration uh, after he beat the Jets with his dad? Yeah, that was a combination of emotional and dangerous. I thought they were actually <laughs> going to hurt each other. Although I kind of liked it. I was actually thinking that that would be the way I'm going to greet you when we finally meet in person. Please don't. <laughs> would you be Gardner or would you be the dad? That's a good question. I'd probably have to be the dad. Yeah, please don't do that. Um, either way, just no. We're no. In honor of Gardner Minshew, I must ask you a question. 
Who has the best mustache in football history? That was the worst pun in football history. Um, the best mustache in football history. There are not as many contenders for this as there would be in baseball and oh, yeah. probably hockey for hockey beards and, and facial hair. I know that Joe Namath had a really interesting one once, but it wasn't really his go-to look. My favorite of all time was Mike Ditka. That's a classic. Um, it's just so Chicago, so, I mean, he just looks like a football coach with that mustache. I, it, he just, he can't be without it. But probably the greatest of all time, and it depends on where you actually think the mustache ends and his beard begins. But if you're talking facial hair, it's got to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. This is just the greatest or possibly most obscene facial hair in the history of the world. It just grows from everywhere, and you don't know where the mustache ends and the beard begins. And, you know, when he goes with just the mustache look, it's even better. But he loves that bushy beard. I, I think he might be the winner. Well, on that note, that'll do it for this episode of The Tailgate. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For Ralph Bacchiano, I'm Michelle Margot, and we will see you next week.